Hello, my name is Elisa Topol. I'm on the Philadelphia Museum of Art Women's Committee and Craft Show Committee. And I have the pleasure today to be with Ryan Jones. This is actually Ryan's first time at our show, but he shared with me that he's traveled over 40,000 miles around the country in a range of shows and venues just in this past year. So he's a very experienced individual to be at these different kinds of shows. Ryan, I was very impressed looking at your website and the brief conversation we had before with your story, how you got to where you are now, the family history that's there, the um, environmental awareness with what you're doing, as well as how beautiful and wonderful are the pens are that you do. And now I'll turn it over to you and give you a chance to tell us your story. Well, thank you so much. I'm super excited to be a part of this year's craft show. I think it'll be a great show and I'm excited to present my work. Uh, my name is Ryan Jones and I am the, the founder and the master craftsman behind um, Roots and Jones. This company is something I started back in 2019 uh, with my grandfather. So the name of it is Roots and Jones. So it started off with me getting back to my roots with him and learning his craft of pen making that he did for many years. So what kind of got me into it was I remember growing up, my grandfather would have these handmade wooden pins laying around the house. And he would also, he wasn't just a pin maker, he would do other woodworking as well. But I remember him giving these gifts, give away, giving these pins away as gifts to friends and family. And I just remember them being around the house and I thought they were so cool. So from there, I was a senior at my in university and I decided I wanted to make my own pin and kind of just learn how to do it and have him teach me. So I started just there. It just wasn't, I wasn't like, oh, I'm going to make a business out of it or anything. And I just started making pens with them and I fell in love with it. So that was back in 2019. And from there, it's kind of slowly grown. And then the past two years, I have really picked it up. And the past year and a half, I've been doing it as my full-time occupation where I only make, make handmade wooden pens and, um, do that kind of thing. So we really kind of focus on reclaimed materials and pins that have stories. So I'm from Kentucky. So I'm sure many of you know, the bourbon industry is huge. And there are actually probably a fun fact that you don't know, there's more bourbon barrels than there are people in the state of Kentucky. So we're able to take that wood and repurpose it into something that can actually be used and can actually be um, a great gift for anyone that likes bourbon but also maybe is a little more thoughtful and likes to write as well so it sounds another thing that we do is we do um we do reclaimed projects such as like we we take wood from people's property we take wood from different places that is really kind of tells a story and so for example we've taken old barns from old historic places um, there's a farm near where I'm from in Louisville, Kentucky, that they kind of repurposed it into a wedding venue and a nice high-end restaurant and all that. And they are able to give us wood from that project and we can repurpose it into a functional item that can actually be used. So that's what we like to do. Um, each one of these, these are kind of some of the pins. Let me take here and show you here. So each one of these kind of has its own story. We do a lot of exotic woods and other woods from here in the US, but we also use um, the bourbon barrel pins, which is what this one is here. And then this one is Bethlehem olive wood from the Holy Land of Israel. And then we also do other like stadium wood pins. So this, for example, is made out of a, a Wrigley Field stadium seat. And we do, we do like to do a lot of those because it really tells a cool story behind the pin as well. So at the, at the show, you would be bringing with you an assortment of pens that you've made, both fountain pens and um, ballpoint pens. Is that is that true? And or ballpoint. Do or that just is. pens? Oh, we, we, do, do, we do make pencils upon request, not necessarily something we have stocked in inventory, but we do, we have made plenty of pencils upon request. We also have fountain pens, ballpoint pens, and we'll bring all of these to the to the show. The good thing about our pens is a lot of times they're interchangeable to where, say you like the pen, but you wanted it to be a roller ball instead of a fountain pen. We can actually just take that exact pen and transition it from one, one to the other. So it's really easy. 
Um, we like to do that stuff as well. Each pin will come packaged in a, a Roots and Jones box like this that we will have. Um, it'll flip open and it will also come with a certificate of authenticity where we will write, I will write out the wood type on it. So you never forget like what the wood is. And then I'll sign it also as a craftsman who made it. And then on the back side of this authenticity card, it's a little QR code that will take you or say you, a lot of times people give our pens away as gifts. So then it makes it really easy for the, your, your family member, your friend, or whoever you're giving the gift the pen to, they can scan that QR code and it'll take them to our website where we have refills for sale, but also you can learn more about our stories and the things we've done as well. So the thing that sounds nice about your coming and, and being able to see you at the craft show is that you certainly will have an assortment of pens for people to purchase, but it also sounds like you will do a lot of commission work based on people's interests. And I already shared with you, my husband's a big mm -hmm. drinker and so, and mm -hmm. he's really hard to get a present for. So I'm already thinking it's going to be for him. You made my life easy this year by doing that. <laughs> So we will have plenty of bourbon barrel pins in, in inventory in stock where you can walk away with them directly from the show. Uh, but we will, it's also really cool to be able to like, for example, we'll bring samples of wood with us to the show and we'll be able to say, okay, this is maybe you have a piece of wood that's this size and you can um, send it to us and we can make a pen out of it. So we really are like to talk, to, I really like to kind of talk with our customers because a lot of times people don't even really know what options are out there because they're like oh i don't need a big piece of wood or i don't really know what will work some woods are you know can i make a pin out of it and really such a small piece of wood can make a pin like for example one bourbon barrel can make anywhere from 200 to 300 pins so it's really there's a lot of opportunity and we don't need very much wood as well that's kind of a big thing about our pins is we're able to take scrap woods from other industries and be able to repurpose that wood into an item that can actually be used. So for example, like the furniture industry, we're not, we're, we're essentially not cutting down trees to make our pins, if that makes any sense. Like we are taking wood from other cutoffs from other industries, or for example, the bourbon industry, a barrel can only be used one time or otherwise it's had to be shipped out. It can't be used more than once by the bourbon industry. So it's kind of like, there's a, it's kind of like an unfortunate thing that there makes there be a lot of waste. And, and we know we try to be able to repurpose those things into into new items that can actually be used so it's kind of a big thing about what we do we also like to take scrap wood that might be firewood or might be thrown away or just like random things that you might want not even consider that could be turned into pens we're able we're able to do that and how long does it take you to make one of the your pens so it's that's people always ask me this and it's hard to explain because each each wood is so different but at the same time I always try to say it's like it takes me about an hour to make one start to finish and that's we typically do it in stages where we'll make like 10 to 15 at a time so that's typically over a two-day period but if I were to just like say hey let's start to make a pen start to finish it would take me a little over an hour but the tricky part is I can mess up on the very last second and have to start all over. And I've done that way more than I would like to admit, but there's it's a very tedious process and it's very, um, definitely it's rewarding because it's like, you can take, I can take a piece of wood like this and have a pen done in an hour, but at the same time, I could take a piece of wood like this, that's pretty expensive and then have it ruined in an hour. So it's, it's, it's a kind of a give and take there. One question I asked you before was whether you had, um, broken into the wholesale market or you had stores now that you had run into that now wanted mm -hmm. all of your things and also where are you going with 40,000 miles I found that <laughs> your answer was very interesting in terms of why yeah. you're not doing completely wholesale and the wide wide variety of um, types of shows that you have been in because of what it is that you're making so could you talk a little bit about that mm -hmm. Yeah, so we, we do definitely we do wholesale and we have um, around 50 other retailers around the country that carry our pins. But what we like to do is we like to make specific pins for those stores. Like, for example, we have pins in the Buffalo Trace distillery that are made out of Buffalo Trace barrels wood. It's like their wood. It's specific to their store. Like we have a couple of retailers in Texas 
where we make Texas pecan pins specific to their store. So that's what we really, really like to do. Uh, we have an upcoming project with the Biltmore Estate where we're making pins out of their wine barrels and we're putting like the famous V on, on their pin, which is really cool. So we really like to do, we don't want just like want to have retailers just to have retailers. We like to be able to create custom pins for those stores that they can offer to people that are, that might appreciate them more in that market. Cause you know, not everyone's going to like every pin, but they can kind of like, for example, the Texas people, they're going to like the Texas pecan pins as well as like out in California, we've made some California redwood pins out of the redwood trees. So like those are going to be really popular in those markets. And we like to be able to tailor our retailers offerings to those. Um, as far as how like, the different places that I've traveled to, there's, it's crazy. That our, the good thing about our product is that we're very versatile. So like we can do the, we like to do the fine art shows. Those are actually technically my, my favorite shows to do um, because it's more face to face. You're talking to the like in direct to consumers, but we also do um, like wholesale shows where we're selling directly to businesses and other retailers. And then we've also done like pin shows. So there's actually, you'd be surprised that there are nothing, there's shows that are dedicated to nothing but pins. And it's, you know, there are hotel ballrooms that are filled with pin vendors and they're not just like handmade pins, but just all pins. So like the famous Mont Blancs all the way to, you know, the handmade pins that from which we do. So it's very, those shows are really interesting because you can kind of see how your handmade pins do against uh, some of the, the world known brands, which is really cool to, to attend. So in the past year, it's not 40,000 miles traveled, it's 40,000 miles driven in my car. So there's, we've probably are over 40,000 miles traveled because I've also flown to different places as well. So we've drawn, drove from, from Kentucky to Texas to back to Kentucky to New York. And then we've flown, we've done shows in San Francisco and Charleston, South Carolina, as well as um, Raleigh, North Carolina. So I make, I'm, all the pins are either made in Raleigh, North Carolina, which is where my wife and I live now. And then I also, I'm from Kentucky and I just recently moved to Raleigh. So I still have my wood shop with my grandfather in Kentucky. So I'm actually here now. I'm, I, I spend about one week a month in Kentucky where I'm making, making the pins, but we do a lot of traveling and we do a lot of shows that because our pins are very versatile and they're, they're able to do well in, in many different like show types and markets and kind of like how I can tailor my pins for different retailers. I can kind of think, okay, this pin might not do so good at a show in San Francisco, but maybe it's going to do really good at a show up in um, Philadelphia or New York or in Texas. You just never, you just never know. So um, we like to have a, we have a very broad inventory. So it's guaranteed that you're probably going to find something that you can connect with. And like, what's really cool about what we can do is say you had a really good, good experience. Say you've been to Hawaii and really loved Hawaii. Like we can source wood from those places and be able to turn them into pins. So I've done a lot of traveling myself. My wife is from Brazil. So I've been down to Brazil with her and traveled, kind of traveled throughout the country. And I've been able to bring wood home with me from just little, like there's little like lumber yards and stuff like that, where we're just taking, again, their scrap woods, the woods that they literally have in their trash cans and their, their dumpsters. Like it's, it's, they're, they think I'm crazy for taking it. They're like, what's this American person doing taking the wood from our, our trash? But I'm able to bring it home and make some really cool, cool stuff out of it. So that's really fun as well. So it's, the options are endless. I like to tell people that we can really customize to, to their needs and tell their story. Cause we don't like, we love pretty pins. We love using the exotic woods that are very beautiful, but we also really like being able to take woods that people actually can connect with and be able to turn that into pins like for example i had a um a customer reach out to me who's him and his daughter planted a tree when she was like four years old and then this past year she was going off to college and he wanted to send me a section of that tree to make a pin out of as a gift for her and just being able to do stuff like that is really kind of what we love to do it, it's kind of our our mission to be able to tell cool stories behind our products as well. One last question I have in closing is one of the things that I've always loved about being part of the Philadelphia Museum of Art Craft Show is the, is the um, connections that people have and being able to meet the artists 
and spend time with them and hear their story, just like we're hearing now. So I love if you would share as a closing story, how you found out about the Philadelphia Museum of Art Craft Show and what made you apply this year. Well, I found, first off, it's, a, it's an amazing show. As soon as I came across it, I was like, I absolutely want to be a part of this. I absolutely feel like my thing, my pins would do well there. And I also felt like the, the other artists and the other vendors were just really top notch and that when whatever their respective crafts are, I did find out about the show on Instagram by actually, um, the name of my company is Roots and Jones. My last name is Jones. And I actually found out about the, the art show through Ray Jones who makes some amazing beautiful boxes uh, out of some of the same woods we make pins out of, but he does a really nice job. And I actually saw that he applied to the show on his Instagram and I clicked on the profile and I was like, oh, this is really cool. So I found out through him and then I quickly was like, I really want to be a part of this show. So it's kind of kind of cool that Instagram can lead lead to actual real real connections and real things. So I'm our really PR, excited for the show. Our team will be happy to hear that. So what did you say? I said our PR team will be happy to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> and Instagram I, I, will be happy so. to hear that. So th thank you so, so much and really look forward to seeing you in November at our show. Thank you. I appreciate it so much. You can see me at the show, of course, and then you can also look me up um, online at rootsandjones.com. And I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me.